okay so we have seen how operators operate on vectors and give you other vectors and so it is also useful to consider you know transformations which take operators and give you other operators which is the subject of this lecture and in particular we will discuss something called a similarity transformation uh, of which unitary transformation turns out to be a special kind of a similarity transformation that's the subject for this lecture okay so let a be a linear operator on some linear vector space v and let s be some other linear operator on the same space with a well defined inverse right so s comes with an inverse s inverse and then we can you know use s and s inverse together uh, to create another operator right which is a, a transformation of the operator a which can be thought of as a transformation you know using this rule right you we multiply s with a and multiply a with s inverse right so it's this uh, product of these three operators is your uh, new operator b right so a transformation of this kind is called a similarity transformation right so we are supposed to think of it as a transformation which you know the input is a and the output is b right so it's it's evident that you know uh, we could have gone to a from b as well and that also would be possible using a similarity transformation right because you know you, you can see that a can be got as s inverse b times s inverse inverse right so s inverse is another linear operator right and it has exactly this form right a is s inverse uh, b s inverse inverse right so therefore if b is obtained from a using a similarity transformation then there is a way to go to a using another similarity transformation so we say that a and b are similar to each other okay so there is a crucial uh, aspect of similarity transformations which we will uh, prove now right so two similar operators a and b share eigen values right so this has important consequences we will return to similarity uh, transformations at a later time when we describe matrices and so on but let's understand this crucial property right similarity transformations leave the spectrum unchanged so if and in particular if x is a uh, is an eigen vector of a with eigen value lambda so then the eigen vector corresponding to the same eigen value for the uh, operator b is going to be s times x right it's very straightforward to see so let's look at the argument so we are given that x is an eigen vector of the operator a so a times x with the eigen value lambda so a times x is equal to lambda times x so now let's consider this vector s uh, you know the operator s acting upon x will give you another vector so let's consider this vector y and so let's see what happens when we operate with the operator b on this new vector y that we have just constructed so if we operate with b on y we have b times s times x because uh, y is s x right but b itself is s a s inverse and then we also have s x so but then we you can contract s inverse and s and so we have s inverse s is the identity so s a uh, s inverse s x is the same as s a x right so what but then a x is the same as lambda x because i x is an eigen vector of um, of a right so this lambda will come out and then so we have managed to show that b acting on um, uh, b acting on y is um, Yeah, so uh, so I can pull out this factor lambda. So then I am left with just S X, but S X is the same as the vector Y. So B acting on Y is the same as lambda acting on Y. Therefore, in fact, the vector Y is an eigen vector of the operator B and with the same eigen value lambda, right? So hence, similarity transformation leaves the spectrum unchanged. And moreover, the eigen vectors of you know two operators 
which are related by a similarity transformation, you know, there is a well-defined and quick rule that which we can use to get from eigenvectors of one operator to the eigenvectors of another operator, provided the two operators are related by similarity transformation. Okay, now let's look at a special kind of similarity transformation which goes by the name of unitary transformation. So in order to get there, we will motivate it starting from unitary operators. Right? So we have already defined what unitary operators are. Unitary operators are operators which they are uh, norm-preserving operators. Right? So let's say you have some unitary operator u, it acts on some vector x and it gives you a vector y. We have seen that unitary operators, you know, the norm of y is going to be the same of the norm of x. Right, because of what unitary matrices are. This is like a de defining property of a unitary operator. Now, we can ask, uh, you know, suppose you, you take an entire uh, space of vectors and you take all these vectors and then you, uh, you know, use the same unitary operator on all these vectors. Right? So, there were you know operators which lived in that space and we have seen that these operators are also defined in terms of the matrix elements right so you can uh, you know bring in a bra vector and a ket vector and compute ma matrix elements for some other arbitrary operator right so if you change all these vectors all these operators themselves are going to undergo a change right so suppose you had some operator a right so some arbitrary operator a and you were looking at its matrix elements and they were given by x1, a, x2. But because you have made this, you know, change where you have taken all these initial uh, vectors x and all these uh, vectors x, you know, become u times x. So then let's see what happens to the matrix elements of this operator when, when, uh, when, when all these uh, x's have been changed to y's right so let's so if x x1 goes to y1 x2 goes to y2 so this matrix element x1 a x2 will go to x1 u dagger a u x2 right so so that's the so we see that you know just like the so, so the change of vectors causes a change of all these matrix elements but if we stare at this equation a little, then we, we, we can see that there is a there is an uh, alternate way in which we could have thought about this. We could have said, oh, this is, suppose we don't do anything to the vectors, we just leave all the vectors as they are, but make a transformation to all operators, right? So, and in particular to this operator A, if you had made a, made a transformation U dagger A U, right? Then, you know, basically we are working with the same kind of change. The, the transformation could have been affected, you know, with operators in, in place of uh, vectors, right? So this is something that happens in quantum mechanics. You might have seen this and the, the ideas of the Heisenberg picture and the Schrodinger picture might come to mind, right? So if we had made this kind of a transformation where we take operators A and then replace them by U dagger A U. This would be completely equivalent, right? And in quantum mechanics, all these kinds of unitary operators appear, for example, in the context of time evolution operators, right? So we could, in the Schrodinger picture, we say that, you know, states evolve as a function of time, and there's this unitary operator with which you act upon a state and you get the instantaneous state at a later time, right? So this is the Schrodinger picture. And then, of course, matrix elements will vary like here. But on the other hand, you could also say that all the states remain as they are, but only it's the operators themselves which are, have a time dependence. This is called the Heisenberg picture, in which the time evolution of the operator is given by a unitary transformation of this kind. U dagger A U will tell you where the operator is. Right. So these are completely equivalent pictures, and it's just it's useful to uh, you know see that there are two different pictures in quantum mechanics, right? So, but uh, right now we are looking at, you know, this transformation itself, right? So from a linear algebra perspective, you know, you can take operators and 
make them undergo transformation. So if we look at this type of a transformation, which I call a unitary transformation, we see that this is in fact a special kind of a similarity transformation. A transformation of this kind, A going to U dagger AU where U and yeah, U is a unitary operator is called a unitary transformation. And a unitary transformation we uh, can quickly convince ourselves is in fact a similarity transformation of a special kind because U and U dagger are inverses of each other, right? Which is a defining property of a unitary transformation is, is that the, uh, uh, the adjoint of, of such a transformation is equal to the inverse, right? So therefore, uh, every unitary transformation is a similarity transformation and it has, it's of a special kind, right? So that's all for this lecture. We will look at, we will come back to similarity transformations in the context of uh, matrices and also we look at how unitary transformation of, uh, of the special kind have, uh, you know, have special properties associated with them. We will return to this a little bit later in the context of matrices. Thank you.